Thanks for coming to this session. The topic is about CO2 carbon capture. Particularly, it is about using osmosis and EDR to model the whole carbon capture plant. My name is Guofu Chen. I'm a senior process engineer at Enerflex Energy Systems. Starting last year, Osman Tech launched a user certification program. I'm certified as an Osman HISIS expert. In addition to that, I'm also a professional chemical and mechanical engineer, licensed in the state of Texas and Louisiana. My area of expertise are renewable energy, pressure relief valve, natural gas liquid, and carbon capture. I like to attend conferences like this one to speak and learn. Imagine you are riding a train with me. Our ride, we have a total of five stations. The first station is an introduction to Enerflex. After that, I will explain the challenge we are facing when it comes to carbon capture plant design and operation. A CO2 capture introduction is also presented to give you some background. Next station is the solution to the challenge. In addition to the rate-based mass transfer, rigorous exchanger simulation is also embedded in HISIS to accurately model the whole carbon capture plant. The final station is something for you to take away. At the bottom of the slide, there is a navigation bar so that you can better follow my thoughts of train. Please see tight. Our journey is about to begin. Enerflex is a global leader in delivering natural gas solutions. The company operates in 17 countries with 57 locations and about 2,000 employees. Enerflex offers full cycle solutions, including engineered systems, integrated turnkey, aftermarket services and parts, and asset ownership. The core products Enerflex offers are from production to the market. Specifically, Enerflex offers gas compression, process and treating, and power generation to our customers. The solution we talk about today is within our gas treating solutions. Attention, attention. We are now arriving at the challenge station. What kind of challenges are you facing? The biggest one is probably how to accurately model how much CO2 is captured in the distillation column. People spend decades of time studying the reaction between AC gas and AMI. Finally, the rate-based distillation was, mod was developed and now it is well adopted. Rate-based distillation solved the most important problem, but still it has some limitations. For EPC companies during the design phase, the approach is not able to accurately predict potential performance beyond design case. It won't allow you to build standard plants either. So the approach is slow to the market. Since every project is different, the project risk is thus high. For the operators who operate the plants, the approach can probably troubleshoot the distillation problem but it won't troubleshoot any other issues. It won't identify any optimization opportunities either. Particularly, it can't monitor heat exchanger falling. Thus, it is hard to tell when it is the right time to do the maintenance. The challenge is here. So what is the solution? The solution is to incorporate rigorous exchanger models while simulating the whole carbon capture plant. The third station aims at telling you more about carbon capture background. Where does the CO2 come from? Based on an EPA report in 2019, transportation sector emitted 29%, electricity sector 25%, 
industry sector 23%, commercial and residential 13%, and the rest is agriculture 10%. Transportation emission is your cars, trains, ships, and airplanes. It does not seem to be economical to capture carbon dioxide from there at this time. Electricity emissions is primarily from natural gas combustion turbine. It probably has the largest impact to lower the overall CO2 emission globally, but it is not easy to capture since flue gas pressure is extremely low. The other promising sector is the industry. It includes CO2 from the natural gas stream, which comes from the underground, all kinds of methane reforming processes, and ethanol fermentation process. Do you realize your home stoves also contribute to this CO2 emission every time you burn the gas? Now that we know where CO2 comes from, but how are we going to do with it? Primarily, we have three rods to handle CO2, biological rods, physical chemical rods, and geological rods. From the biological rods, we can feed CO2 to algae and some bacteria. It can be used to grow some dedicated energy crops as well. In addition, we might be able to inject CO2 to coal bed to produce methane through methanogenesis process. We may also use geological rods, such as send CO2 to the ocean to store and make biochar. Regarding carbon capture, currently we are using physical chemical rods. Primarily, we can use absorption, adsorption, membrane separation, and cryogenic distillation technology. This slide further explains the physical, physical chemical methods. For absorption, we can use chemical solvent or physical solvent to absorb CO2. The most common chemical solvent is MEA, and the most common physical solvent is Silexo. For adsorption method, the typical adsorbents are alumina, zeolite, or activate carbon. When it comes to regeneration, typically pressure swing or temperature swing methods are used. Cryogenic technology is also used sometimes. CO2 is liquefied and sent to distillation column to separate from other substances. Since CO2 becomes solid dry ice at a temperature of about negative 109 Fahrenheit, some people also turn CO2 into dry ice to separate. Membrane is another technology to capture CO2. This presentation primarily focuses on chemical solvent, MEA, to capture CO2 from flue gas. What do we do after CO2 is captured? There are many uses based on this graph. The blocks with green background are supported by National Energy Technology Lab. From my perspective, EOR, enhanced oil recovery, is probably the biggest CO2 user. Here is a block flow diagram of a carbon capture plant. Air and fuel are combusted in the gas turbine to produce electricity. Flue gas is first cooled in the cool module before sending to the capture module. CO2 is captured in the capture module and the off gas with minimal CO2 is vented to the air. In the cooling module, water is first spread to the flue gas to cool the temperature above its dew point. Then the pressure is boosted up in a blower. Finally, it is cooled in the direct contact cooling tower to the desired temperature. Water is recirculated in the loop. Excess water can be used as a makeup water or can be disposed. In the capture module, lean amine is first fed at an intermediate location of the contactor. 
while cooled flue gas is fed at the bottom of the contactor. As lean amine falls down, it captures majority of the CO2 and the rich amine is then pumped from the contactor bottom to the top of the regenerator through the cross exchanger. CO2 is stripped off at the top of the regenerator. After overhead cooler, condensed water is separated out in the overhead drum and CO2 is captured as a vapor. As rich amine falls down the regenerator and CO2 is stripped off at the bottom of the reboiler, it has less CO2. The lean amine first goes through a surge drum then the cross exchanger, finally it is pumped to the contactor after being cooled. Thus it forms a close aiming loop. A water wash section is added at the top of the contactor to minimize aiming loss. We are now at the fourth station, the solution station. First, I will talk about the red-based mass transfer method then rigorous heat exchanger integrated in the simulation. On this red-based mass transfer graph, we have three, three vertical lines and four regions, bark vapor, vapor film, liquid film, and bark liquid. Between the vapor film and liquid film, it is the interface. For red-based model, interface is the only place where it reaches equilibrium. As a gas travels from the bark vapor to the interface, the concentration is reduced from YV to YI. At the interface, assuming equilibrium, we are able to get AC gas concentration XI in the liquid phase. AC gas, AC gas continues to travel from the interface to the bulk liquid, the concentration is further reduced from Xi to X bulk. By the way, AC gas stays in the electrolyte with ions such as HS minus, HCO3 minus. For most hydrocarbon process, YV is the same as YI. Xi is the same as X bulk. However, for CO2 capture, YV is larger than YI and XI is larger than X bulk. The difference of the concentration determines how much AC gas is transferred from one region to the next. The mass transfer rate is proportional to the interface area and the concentration differences. Austin Heisis offers an easy way to model the rate based mass transfer. By specifying the hardware of the column and their dimensions, HISIS is able to predict how much CO2 is captured in the column. For this particular application, the contactor diameter is six meters and each tray is equivalent to 0.61 meters random packing. AC gas chemical solvent physical property package is used and MEA is the chosen AME. As I mentioned earlier, HISIS rate-based mass transfer method solves the most important challenge to predict how much CO2 will be captured. However, HISIS alone won't allow us to actually predict the whole carbon capture plant performance. With OSM EDR integrated in HISIS to model heat exchangers, now we can have a complete, rigorous, and accurate plant model. Rate-based mass transfer might be new to some of us. However, I think most of us probably understand how heat transfer rate is calculated. Heat transfer rate equals heat transfer coefficient U times area A and delta temperature. Similarly, mass transfer rate equals mass transfer coefficient K times area A and delta composition. In this simulation, lean cooler and cross exchangers are rigorously modeled in Osman EDR. For the lean cooler, there are two bays, and each bay 
has two bundles and three fans. The lean cooler outlet temperature is calculated by Osman EDR and it is not a fixed value. Similarly, the cross exchanger is also modeled in Osman EDR. It has an effective area of 2,226 square meters and the overall dirty heat transfer coefficient is about 6,321 kilojoule per hour per square meter per Celsius degree. This simulation uses red based mass transfer method and it also integrates Austin EDR to rigorously calculate heat exchanger performance. It models the whole carbon capture plant and it can accurately predict the whole carbon capture plant performance. After a long ride, we are finally at the last station. Before you leave, I would like to offer you something to take away. Accurate performance prediction of carbon capture plants is needed for both suppliers and operators. Rate-based absorption alone is not sufficient to accurately predict whole carbon capture plant. Osman HISIS can integrate Osman EDR to actually model the whole carbon capture plant with heat exchanger geometries. The integration approach leads to accurate performance prediction for carbon capture plants. Thanks very much for riding with me. I hope to see you soon in our next journey.